Good evening, friends. I'm Dr. Ajay Shah. Uh, with a popular demand, I'm bringing you back the diabetes seminar, which I did it on Saturday. Uh, Saturday, I did a four-hour marathon on diabetes with a total of 13 segments. It had about uh, 2,000 views, actually. Even though it was a four-hour long, it had uh, uh, 2,000 views. And that diabetes seminar is already on YouTube. So reach out to our channel, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. And that four-hour seminar is already on YouTube. But a lot of people ask me if I can uh, record this segment in about half an hour uh, sessions. So that will be on YouTube for half an hour. So you can watch it uh, in a gradual way instead of watching all four hours. So with a popular demand, I'm bringing you the first two segments of total of 13 segments on diabetes. As we all know, diabetes is on the rise, not just in America, but in the whole world, diabetes is getting pandemic. Everybody is getting diabetes, and that's mostly because of obesity. So let's start with the uh, uh, first two segments of my talk on, uh, on diabetes. Uh, so again, diabetes is a raging pandemic. Pandemic because it's been affecting the whole world. Whole world. We'll cover that it's raging because the prevalence of diabetes is exponentially getting higher and higher. Over the last four years, it has almost become four times in America. So this will be again, segment one and two of total 13. I'll be doing two segments every day. So we will cover the diabetes talk over the next six days. Again, I'm Dr. Ajay Shah. I'm board certified in lifestyle medicine uh, and cardiology. Uh, this is a very inclusive seminar. This will be about half an hour of segment one and two. Uh, if you cannot watch live, this will be on YouTube hopefully tonight. So you can watch it today or tomorrow and then keep watching two segments at a time. Um, uh, if you have type two diabetes, please watch this all uh, 13 segments at least three times if you are type two diabetes because this seminar will teach you to reverse the type two diabetes. And if you are pre-diabetic, it will also reverse the pre-diabetes. And definitely it will help you to prevent the diabetes if you have family history of diabetes or if you have risk factors for type two diabetes. So again, watching this seminar is very critical if you are at risk of diabetes, if you have pre-diabetes or if you already have type two diabetes. Uh, disclaimer, this seminar obviously is not gonna replace your medical care. So if you have any medical health issue, Please stay in touch with your primary care physician or your other physician. I have no financial interest in giving this seminar. Uh, thanks to Jayshree, Amish, Saloni, my parents, and Hannah, our social media manager. Definitely thanks to all my patients and followers because I learn a lot from my patients. I learn a lot from my followers and my friends. When they ask me questions, if I can answer, I can answer. Uh, if I know the answer, otherwise I look up the answer and that's how I increase my knowledge. So again, big thanks to my patients and my followers. Definitely a big thanks to all the mentors, all the giants where I've learned from, all the books, all the YouTube videos. I will provide all the names of all the mentors where I have learned from. So you can go directly to their own videos, their own books. So you can go to source where I get my information. Definitely a big dedication to one person, Saloni Shah, our daughter. You can clearly see smiling. Uh, happy. Uh, she's in a medical school, a big inspiration for me. Uh, she has taught me many things about life. She has taught me over the last 10 years. So definitely a big thank you to Saloni, big dedication to Saloni. So why I'm giving this seminar? Diabetes is on the rise. Like I said, it's a raging pandemic. I'm qualified as a cardiologist where I see many complications of diabetes. So I've seen uh, di complications of diabetes firsthand. Matter of fact, we know now that all diabetics, they don't die from the sugar. They die either from heart attack or heart disease or heart failure or kidney failure or many times cancer. So it's not the sugar which kills diabetes. Many times it's the heart disease. So as a cardiologist, I'm definitely uh, aware of many complications of diabetes and I'm also uh, watching you know, them to make sure they don't get any complications. I myself was a pre-diabetic. I reversed it completely. I've gone through what many of you go through. I have personal experience. I know how to do it. I've changed my lifestyle. So I'll show you how I have done it. Uh, to give you my history, my story, in 2014 to 17, my A1C, which is an average of 90-day uh, sugar, 
it was 5.5% to 5.9%. So I was clearly pre-diabetic. Anything above 5.7 is pre-diabetes. Now my A1C runs 5.2, totally healthy range. Uh, I'm off metformin, I lost 45 pounds. I exercise at least two hours every day. I sleep great. Uh, and I'll show you my story also as we go. My fasting sugar now runs anywhere from 84 to 91. It used to be 97 to 102. So my fasting sugar has also come down. So I personally reversed it and I can help you to reverse it also. Uh, I know my program works because I've learned from the people who have reversed diabetes. I've learned from Dr. Neil Barnard, Dr. Onish, uh, Dr. Gregor, Dr. Furman, and they all have reversed diabetes in many patients. I'm not an endocrinologist, so I'm not a diabetic doctor. I'm not a primary care physician. So I've not seen patients uh, reverse the diabetes that often. But over the last three years, as I have taught many of my patients uh, lifestyle changes, I've seen over time that many of them have reversed type 2 diabetes. And I will give you one example, which you can clearly see that that person reversed the type 2 diabetes. We definitely need to work together. Uh, staying healthy, I always say, is a team sport. Staying healthy always is a team sport. Uh, I'm not captain, I'm an equal level uh, team player. I just know more than you because I've gone through school, I've gone through fellowship, but we all are together as patients, as people, you know, as the people who can teach each other, who can learn from each other. So we are definitely are together in this uh, health journey. Again, this is my mission to make every person on this earth healthy, happy, and live long. I've taken up this mission over the last three years, more so for the last five months. We have now a, a healthy living with Dr. Ajay Shah Facebook page. We have almost 11,000 followers, 11,000 followers. We have 11,000 followers now. We are on Instagram, we are on YouTube. So reach out to us uh, and let's see what we are doing. Uh, I want all of you to be fully educated. More you know, better care you get, more you know, better chronic disease prevention will happen. So definitely you need to know more. We spend sometimes hours learning about our car, about our heater in the house, air conditioner in the house, our phone sometimes. We spend hours learning about it, but we don't learn enough about our own body. And that needs to change because chronic disease, including obesity, diabetes is on the rise. So more we know about our body, more we know about our health is actually going to protect us from many chronic disease, a lot of uh, healthcare costs, a lot of suffering, and definitely not dying prematurely. So knowing more about health is very important. Actually, my mission is to make you a mini doctor of diabetes. After this seminar, if once you watch all 13 segments, you will be a mini diabetic doctor. I can assure you, I can pretty much promise you, I can pretty much guarantee you that you'll be a mini diabetic doctor. So again, the reason most importantly I want to give this seminar, and I always give all the seminars on a regular basis, is because I care about you. I feel what you go through as a patient, as a person. I know what disease sometimes you suffer from. I know how expensive those diseases get, disease get when you have to go to your doctor, when you have a procedure, when you take medications. For example, insulin costs 100 to 300 hours per month. So I definitely understand what you go through every day and I care about you, I truly do. And that's a reason, that's the most important reason I'm giving this seminar. So what is the promise of this seminar? The promise of seminar that it will help your doctor to manage your diabetes better. If you watch this 13 segments, your doctor will definitely be able to manage your diabetes better. It will help your diabetes educator teach you more easily about diabetes management. So it'll be easy for your diabetic educator to teach you. It can help you reverse type 2 diabetes and prevent it. Type 2 diabetes, I'm going to talk extensively over 13 segments, but type 2 diabetes is definitely reversible. It can lower the need for insulin in type 1 diabetics. So if uh, any of you or any of your family members have type 1 diabetes, if you follow the seminar, you can definitely lower the need for insulin. It can prevent many complications of diabetes. Like I said, diabetics don't die from sugar. Many times they die from heart disease, kidney failure, dialysis, cancer, uh, stroke, uh, many vascular disease. So they, if you follow the seminar, you can definitely prevent many complications. Uh, again, if you follow this lecture 100%, all the recommendation, it can get you off many medications, including insulin, if you're type 2 diabetes in three to six months. Actually, you can reverse your type 2 diabetes completely in three to six months and can go off many, many medications and possibly all the medications, including insulin. So 
That's a saving of thousands of dollars per year and preventing many complications and living long. So again, this seminar is very important. I put in a lot of efforts in making the slides. As you go, as you go, you will realize that I've read about uh, almost 30 or 40 hours over the last two weeks. Uh, I've made about 300, 350 slides, and you will start to realize that diabetes education is so important. So let's start with the real life example. A 62 year old African American male, body mass index of 36. Body mass index is the one which you can calculate based on your height and weight. And all of you should know your body mass index. Uh, you can calculate with an online calculator. So do it tonight if you have not done it. Any body mass index about 30 is obesity. So this person clearly is obese. He has high blood pressure. He has high triglyceride, which is the fat in the blood. He has low HDL, which is the low level of good cholesterol. His fasting blood sugar was 162. Normal is 126 or normal. Non-diabetic is 126 or below. Non-diabetic is 126 or below. And A1C was 7.3. Normal A1C is 6.5 or below. Not, not normal, but non-diabetic A1C. Non-diabetic A1C is 6.5 or below. So all of you watching, can you guess what's his diagnosis? Obviously, it's very obvious if you have if you have been talking to your primary care physician or if you already have diabetes or prediabetes, his A1C has gone above 6.5, so he clearly has diabetes. His fasting blood sugar has gone above 126, so he clearly has diabetes. He also has some other features of diabetes, which is obesity, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, and low level of good, good cholesterol. I have another example, which is a success example. We had a, I had a 60-year-old male, type 2 diabetic for 10 years, weight was 300 pounds, insulin, he was on insulin, his A1C was 10.3. So clearly, if you have diabetes, you know that this is very uncontrolled diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes, and he was diabetic for 10 years. He saw me one year ago, I prescribed lifestyle changes, including whole food, plant-based diet, essentially eating more vegetables, more fruits, no oil, uh, minimum animal products, no dairy. He lost about 70 pounds in one year. His weight loss was very rapid. He was actually losing one to two pounds per week consistently, sometimes up to three pounds a week. And his insulin completely got off. So he's off insulin now. His A1C is 6.3. So he's actually below the diabetic range now. He's still pre-diabetic, but his A1C has came down from 10.3 to 6.3. And he's feeling great. So again, what do you think of the success? To me, this is a, a grand success. He was able to do this thing within a year. He was diabetic for 10 years and he was able to reverse his diabetes in one year. So if you have type two diabetes, you can do the same thing if you follow the seminar and if you follow my recommendations. So how common is diabetes? You know, many of us think, many of us think that I'm not gonna get diabetes. I used to think that way, but let's see how many of us are gonna get it unless we prevent it, unless we reverse it. So overall, I mean, America, 12 to 14 percent of population is diabetic. 12 to 14 percent of population is diabetic. Adults, if you look at the adults, it's about 15 to 20 percent. So almost one in five uh, people have diabetes as an adult. If you look at the age above 65, uh, almost uh, 25, 30 uh, percent. In 2020, my even though the numbers are not out yet, but in 2020. If you look at the adults, they're about 20%. And if you look at the Medicare population, probably it's about 30, 35%. In 1980, in America, only three to 5% population was diabetic. So diabetes has quadrupled. Diabetes is four times more, 400 times more, four times more compared to 1980, just in 40 years. After age 65, the Medicare population today, probably it's about 30 to 35%. If you look at the African-American, it's about 15 to 18%, very high again. Uh, after age 65, for African-American, it's 30 to 35%. So again, very high uh, rate of diabetes in African-Americans. If you look at the Hispanics, it's about 15 to 18%. Pima Indians is actually the highest, about 50% risk of diabetes. Indian Americans like myself, it's about 19% of adults. So again, one in five and about 25 to 30% after age 50 in America. So one in three, one in four. Very high uh, prevalence of diabetes in Indian Americans, which we will talk as we go why they get more diabetes. Again, the main reason for this uh, 
increasing prevalence of diabetes is because of obesity. Many younger patients are getting type 2 diabetes because younger and younger patients are getting obese. And no, we no longer call type 2 diabetes a adult onset diabetes because we are seeing type 2 diabetes in many teenagers, particularly teenagers, girls, and boys. Uh, if you look at the diabetes, diabetes has a twice the mortality. So if a person has diabetes, he has a two times more chance of dying and lifespan is reduced by 10 years. So average diabetic lives 10 years less than a non-diabetic. So that's very, very concerning. By 2050, the predictions are that 33% of Americans will be type two diabetic. So by 2050, 33% of uh, Americans will be type two diabetic. My own prediction is that uh, uh, by 2035, so just 15 years from now, 33% of Americans will be type 2 diabetic. Very concerning, very alarmingly high rate. My prediction is that by 2035, 90% of Americans will be either diabetic or pre-diabetic. 90% of Americans by 2035 will be diabetic or pre-diabetic. And that's because of uh, rising obesity. So let's see diabetes by state. In 1994, you can see on the map on the left side that there was a rare state which was about 6%. Most states were below five, below 4%. By, uh, by 2009, you can start to see that many states are about 11.2% by 2009. And if you look at 2013, lots of states were about 12%. And again, in 2017, many states were about 14, 15%. West Virginia was highest at 15, 15.2% in adults. Again, very, very high prevalence in 2017. And imagine the numbers in 2020, uh, the current year, the numbers are only higher, probably 15, 16, 17% in many states. So in my opinion, what I think is a true prevalence of diabetes, let's go through some thinking, let's go through some logic. Until 2003, blood sugar of 140 was the cutoff for diabetes. So before 2003, if somebody's blood sugar was below 140, he wasn't considered diabetic. In 2003, we changed the definition of diabetes and the definition was changed to 126. So many people who were borderline between 126 and 40, 140 became diabetic. So again, 126, remember that. But my prediction is that eventually American Diabetic Association will lower the definition of diabetes to around 115, 118, which I think will happen in the next five to 10 years, and there, there will be more and more diabetic. And the reason I say that, because any sugar, any sugar about 84 is abnormal, particularly any sugar about 100 is very abnormal. So we may see a lowering of diagnosis of diabetes to 115, 118 in five to 10 years. And if that's the case, there will be a lot more diabetic patients in America. So again, this, uh, table shows that when the blood sugar is above 84, about 84, there are higher chance of dying prematurely, there are higher chance of heart attack and much of heart disease. So it's not the 100, it's actually the 84, which is the optimal sugar. Many patients don't realize that, many people don't realize that, many doctors don't realize that. It's not the 100, it's actually 84. 84 is the optimal sugar. So I want my sugar to be 84. My sugar runs between 84 and 91, so I can be better. I need to lose few pounds. I need to continue exercising. I need to lift weights, but I need to bring my sugar below 84. My A1C is 5.2, so not bad, but ideally my A1C should be 4.9 or below. As we get older, there is some insulin resistance, but it doesn't have to be with aging. If I eat 100% healthy, which I need to, I follow probably 90%. If I exercise, I get my steps in. My weight training sometimes suffers because I'm busy driving two hours to work, but I need to do regular weight training. I sleep well, so I should bring my A1C from 5.2 to 4.9 if I work hard. All of us can do that. My A1C used to be 5.9, now it's 5.2. So I definitely have improved it, but I have room to go to 4.9. So let's look at the type 2 diabetes prevalence in the world. 9% of adult population in, a, in the world is diabetic. So that's very high. 40% of these 9% are undiagnosed. So many people don't even know that they have type 2 diabetes or diabetes. Marshall Island in Pacific Islands is 21%. Tokalu territory in New Zealand is almost 30%. So extremely high risk of diabetes in that territory in New Zealand. 
Saudi Arabia is 20% because of uh, obesity, because of drinking a lot of soft drinks, because of lack of exercise, they definitely have a much higher risk. In India, where I come from, urban population is 12 to 15%, rural population is 8 to 12%. And that urban population is almost quadruple, almost quadruple, not just in 20, 30 years, but last 15 years. So diabetes in India is actually going up exponentially much faster than in America. Diabetes in India is growing up much more exponentially, much more faster than America. Di India is the new diabetes capital. India is the new diabetes capital. And that's partly because of processed food in urban area, a lot of cheap processed food, a lot of fast food. We are now Pizza Hut, we have uh, Dunkin' Donut, we have Subway, we have all different kinds of fast food restaurants in all urban areas. My city has it. A uh, lot of lack of exercise. Many people in urban area are using their bikes, using the scooters, using their cars. They're not even walking three, 4,000 steps. And that's the reason India has a very high risk of type two diabetes now. Pakistan, Bangladesh is just like India. In United Kingdom, whatever the reason, the rate is not as high, even though United Kingdom is a Western country, still the rate is low. Germany is about 10%, Turkey is about 13%. China, which used to be two to 3% just 40, 30 years ago, is now 12 to 14%. So China is definitely catching up to America. The lowest rate of diabetes in Lithuania and Estonia, about 4%. Like I said, UK is about six, five to 6%. Australia is also very low, 5%. Canada, our neighbor just 100 miles north of my house is 7%. So we definitely can learn from what Canadian food cover in my seminar as we go on diabetes, that uh, Canadian food plate is much more healthier food plate than food plate in America. So whatever the recommendations are from uh, uh, guidelines of American food, American healthy food plate is much more different than Canadian food plate. This is again diabetes world prevalence. You can see the Mexico is one of the high prevalence. Uh, Saudi Arabia has high prevalence. Uh, China, India, America has about nine to 12% prevalence. So let's finish this segment one. I'll be doing two segments today. This is a reflection of segment one. So I'm gonna ask you a few, few quick questions. Just, just answer uh, as you listen to this talk. Number one, do you have diabetes either type one or type two? If you have diabetes, what was your last A1C? You, if you have diabetes or if you have pre-diabetes, you all should know your A1C. If you don't know your A1C, ask your primary care, pick up the phone tomorrow, call their medical assistant and ask what was your last A1C. Your A1C should be below 5.7, ideally below 4.9, but definitely below 5.7. And do you know the risk factors for diabetes if you don't have diabetes or pre-diabetes? We'll cover all the risk factors as we go in this seminar. And what is your body mass index? What is your BMI? You all should know your body mass index. You all should know your body mass index. So again, this brings to our conclusion of segment one. We are starting this health coaching program, which is a very cost-effective program. We are offering twice a month, once a month, once a week, depending upon uh, what your needs are. We are creating some packages. Uh, this will, it will cost a very small amount. We are creating different costs, different price for each package. So please stay tuned. This, this will start July 1st, and I'll, I'll show you how to, how to connect with us. Again, this is the end of segment one. Please uh, continue watching. Segment two will be continuing on this YouTube video and this Facebook Live on today. That will cover type two diabetes, what causes two type, type two diabetes in detail. Invite your friends and family, if you're watching live, share to your page so other people can watch it. Uh, also invite your friends and family to our page, to our Instagram account. If you're not on Instagram on our page, it's Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. We have about 30 or 40 videos on our YouTube channel. They're all healthy lifestyle videos. Please watch them, please comment them. And again, today, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and do that and I'll answer all your questions and comments. Thank you. This again brings to segment two, uh, segment two. So let's cover types of diabetes. There are type one diabetes, type two diabetes, type 1.5 diabetes, which is called LADA, gestational diabetes and other types. 
type 1 diabetes happens because of beta cell destruction and failure. Beta cells are the cells in pancreas which produces insulin, which we'll cover as we go when we cover the pathophysiology of diabetes. So again, beta cells are the cells in pancreas which produces insulin. When beta cell destruction happens because of autoimmune type disease, it stops producing insulin and type 1 diabetes happens. It could be idiopathic, it could be viral, it could be autoimmune. It typically starts in children, uh, but it can happen in adults also, which we'll cover. There's some role of dairy, there's some role of uh, virus, there's some viral infections, there's some role of certain toxins. Overall, about five to 10% of all diabetics are type one diabetic. Type two diabetes is the most common type of diabetes. Almost 90 to 95% of diabetics are type two diabetic. It happens predominantly due to insulin resistance, which we'll be covering insulin resistance very extensively in this seminar. I'm almost spending an hour on insulin resistance. I'm almost spending an hour on insulin resistance, so please stay tuned. Uh, this type two diabetic many times also have a, a deficit of insulin secretion because they need more insulin. They're not secreting enough. They are sitting, secreting insulin, but the need has gone up. So they have a relative deficit of insulin secretion. Uh, type two diabetics don't have antibodies to beta either cells. They're, Pancreatic cells die because of non-autoimmune uh, disease, non-autoimmune issues. And many times it's shown that 50% of beta islet cells in pancreas already have died by the diagnosis, by the time the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is made. So many times, by the time type 2 diabetes is uh, diagnosed, half of the beta islet cells are already gone. And that's the reason I always say, know that what your A1C is, Definitely keep your A1C below 5.7. Don't even get pre-diabetes. And if ideally, keep your A1C below 5.2, below 5 if you can, but definitely not above 5.7. So what are the risk factors for type 2 diabetes? I'm going to cover type 2 diabetes very extensively because type 2 diabetes is most common. Type 2 diabetes is on the rise. So type 2 diabetes is the most uh, important disease to cover. I'm going to spend about a 45 minute, one hour on type 2 diabetes risk factors. The most common risk factor for type 2 diabetes is obesity and overweight. Like we talked about it, obesity means body mass index about 30. You all should know your body mass index. Uh, overweight is body mass, BMI about 25. Definitely sedentary lifestyle is uh, also an issue. 75% uh, of Americans don't get the recommended physical activity per week. Again, 75% of Americans don't get the recommended physical activity per week. Definitely there are a lot of dietary factors, a lot of processed food, which we'll cover. So then obesity is a BMI, body mass index about 30. Overweight is about body mass index about 25. Obesity is uh, about 40% of the population, which I think is gonna go up, I'll show you. And obesity or overweight is almost 80% of US population. So again, 80% of Americans are either overweight or obese. There's a prediction that by 2030, 50%, 50%, half of the Americans will be obese. My prediction is in seven years, my prediction is in seven years, half of the Americans will be obese. In seven years, half of the Americans will be obese. And I can, I can see that, I can prove that. Again, this is a, a map you can see in 1985, most states were below 10%. Most states were below 10%. I remember coming to this country in 86. I was in Detroit, uh, somewhat unhealthy population. Even in Detroit, obesity was probably 10, 15%. Max 15%, 10 to 15%. Uh, most states were below 10%. In 2008, so about 23 years, a lot of states were about 20, 25%. Some states were even 30%. By 2016, you can see many states are about 30, about 35%. And this is 2030, just 10 years from the now, 60% uh, many states will be obese. My prediction is this will happen in seven years, not 10 years. In seven years, half of the Americans will be obese. And again, obesity, leads to many complications. Diabetes is one of them. Obesity leads to heart disease, stroke, many cancers, obviously arthritis in the joints. So obesity is just a bad, bad condition to have. I'm giving a sp special talk on obesity and weight loss in about two, three weeks. There will be also another long extensive talk. I'm going to cover all the science all the signs of obesity. I'm going to prepare probably at least 
100 hours of obesity. I'll be reading, I read many books, I watched many videos, but I'll be going through extensive, extensive research on obesity. In three weeks, there'll be a very long talk on obesity. Obviously that talk would be in segments on YouTube also, so you can watch half an hour at a time, but there'll be a very long seminar on obesity and how you can safely lose weight. Again, obesity, like I said, is a very unhealthy condition. And you can just see that some of the Southern states like West Virginia, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, uh, Oklahoma, uh, Kentucky, they're all considered unhealthy state in 2018. We need to change that. Uh, so obesity is mostly due to excess calories. Excess calories, we eat about 500 more calories per day compared to 40 years ago. We eat 500 more calories per day and we are not exercising more. So all those 500 calories leads to increase in our body weight. We definitely have excess saturated fat in our diet. We've been eating more animal products, more chicken, more cheese, and that's the reason saturated fat has gone up. We definitely eat more simple carbs, more white rice, more white bread, more cookies, more cakes, more processed food, and that again has gone up over the last 40 years. We definitely are eating a lot more processed food. Uh, many of you have listened to my lecture before. In America, 65% of our calories come from processed food. 65% of our calories come from processed food. And because of, uh, uh, this, because of this, a uh, lot of processed food, a lot of excess calories, obesity is on the rise. There's a theory that this carb causes the insulin rise and that insulin rise causes us fat. That's not true. It's not the carb. Carb is not the enemy. Carb is not the enemy. It's the simple carb. It's the saturated fat. It's the excess calorie. A lot of people in the world have a 70% carb in the diet, but their carb is whole food, plant-based diet, and they don't get obese. They don't get type 2 diabetes. So again, it's not the carb. It's the type of the carb, type of the calories we eat, type of the saturated fat we eat. And again, the proof is that during World War II, people were eating less calorie because there was a rationing of food. There was a lowering of obesity and type two diabetes. So again, if you, and that happened over five, seven year, five to seven years. So again, if you eat healthy, if you eat healthy and if you lose weight, you can prevent the type two diabetes. Again, it's a caloric access, 500 calories per day, saturated fat access, a lot of simple carb, a lot of sugar, which causes obesity and type two diabetes. So then let's see why this thing is happening. This is a typical lunch. This is a typical lunch in America. Uh, people are eating lunch many times at a fast food place. They have final calories in French fries. They have final calories in burger, and then they have a Coke. So again, this is about 1,000 to 1,200 calories for lunch, 1,000 to 1,200 calories for lunch, which is, in my opinion, very unhealthy, almost unacceptable, but it's very common. And this can be a typical dinner where a person may go to a, a, a restaurant and can eat, again, fries as an appetizer, uh, a big meat dish, about 800,000 calories, have a Coke as a drink, and then have a dessert with ice cream and a shake. And this can be almost 1,500 to 2,000 calorie dinner. And many times these dinners are late, very unhealthy dinner. So again, this, is, this can be typical uh, uh, lunch and a dinner. So again, I, like I said, if you eat whole food, plant-based, no oil diet, even if you have a lot of carb in the diet, all those carbs are complex carbs, including vegetables without oil, uh, both cooked and raw vegetables, uh, fruits, uh, both uh, uh, fresh fruits and frozen fruits without any sugar, and no oil. Even though this diet can have 70% carb, 80% carb, obesity is rare. And we will prove it as we go in this seminar. So why obesity happens? Because our eating habits are hijacked by food industry. Obviously it's our fault, but in my opinion, it's a more the fault of food industry and our government and our policies. So again, our eating habits are hijacked by food industry. Various marketing and test manipulation leads to food addiction. And food industry knows how to make us addicted to the food. Salt, sugar, and fat are more addicting than cocaine. There was a study done in mice and mice reached out for sugar more than even cocaine. So again, salt, sugar, and fat are more addicting than cocaine. And industry knows that. So all the processed food, 
all the fast food we eat has all three of them, salt, sugar, and fat. Even ketchup made out of plant, made out of tomato has all three in there. So food industry actually employ many PhDs in nutrition. They employ many, even uh, doctors, they employ many chefs, so they can exactly make the food, which can, we can be addicted and they can have a profit. Many of this food are processed food. Many of this food are cheap food. We find the food now at every gas station. We even find food at Best Buy. We find food everywhere. You know, we used to have a, like food only at maybe restaurants, other places. Now the processed food, the bars, the drinks, the chips, you know, all those things are even at a gas station. So food is so abundantly prevalent. All the processed food that we always are eating. We are always eating. When we go to gas, we get chips, we get Coke, we get candies, we get cookies, and we are eating while we are driving. Food, sub food subsidies are also a problem. Government subsidizes food, which is very unhealthy. I've never seen a subsidy in broccoli. I've never seen a subsidy in spinach. We need to subsidize food, which is healthy. So again, with all this thing, we need to be smarter. We need to be more vigilant. Again, this is the typical marketing. These are the slides I borrowed from my happiness talk. You should look at the happiness talk also. When you look at the Coke ad, it says, give a little happiness. If you drink Coke, supposedly you will be happy. If you go to McDonald's, happy family, happy me. All of them are eating processed food. All of them are eating very high calorie dense food. They have a Coke They're sitting next to them. They're probably uh, chicken nuggets, they have fries. There are many other unhealthy food. Again, there's Happy Meal, you know, inviting a lot of kids, also eating a lot of unhealthy food. And there is a pizza fair, it's just not just unlimited pizza, but unlimited happiness. So in America, people are brainwashed that when you eat more food, when you eat a lot of this salt, sugary, uh, high calorie food, quote unquote, you will get happiness. Again, this is a big ad, big billboard from Coke, happiness in a new bottle. No wonder we are getting obese. The food industry is hijacking our brain to eat very unhealthy food. Again, this was a Mexican dish, build your own happiness. With a lot of cheese, a lot of probably beef or bean, probably beef, you know, a lot of uh, white tortilla, a lot of processed food, a uh, lot of unhealthy food. And this is the reason obesity is on a rampant. So again, we calorie dense food, that means lot more calorie per pound. We will cover calorie density uh, topic as we go in this lecture. We are eating more red, red meat compared to 50, 100 years ago. We are eating more saturated fat. We are eating a lot of simple carb. Uh, so other risk factors include high blood pressure. People have a high blood pressure. Sometimes type two diabetes can happen. Uh, type two diabetes people also have high blood pressure. It's a chicken and egg, which one comes first? Again, what we ate in 1970 versus 2010. We are eating about 500 more calories per day. We are eating about 500 more calories per day. Uh, a lot of this calorie from, come from grain product and many of this grain are processed grain, polished grain where the fiber is removed. So a lot of simple uh, white bread, uh, white rice. So again, we are eating a lot more grain compared to uh, uh, 40 years ago. We are definitely eating more fat and oil. Uh, fortunately, we are not eating that much more red meat, but that red meat needs to come down. We are eating slightly more sugar and sweeteners. We're eating about same dairy products, but again, that needs to come down. We are not eating that much vegetables. We are not increasing vegetables, even though we have enough proof. Vegetables are good for us. Uh, I always jokingly said that the two most common vegetable food, two most common plant-based food we eat in America, any guess, any of you guess, the two most common plant-based food is French fries and ketchup. French fries and ketchup, those are the two most common plant-based food. So again, eating whole food plant-based is probably less than 2% of our calories. We're not eating that much beans. Again, beans and legumes have been proven to increase the lifespan, can make you live longer, but we're not eating enough beans and greens. Plant-based protein is much more safer. Plant-based protein is much more safer compared to animal-based protein. We are definitely eating less fruit. Most of our food comes from fruit juice. I'll show you also that slide. And we are eating about the same amount of eggs. We are definitely eating more sugar compared to the uh, last uh, 100, 150 years. 
sugar sugar has increased actually ex exponentially fortunately over last 5 to 10 years sugar consumption has stabilized now and we are eating slightly less sugar but now we are having lot of sugar substitute which is also bad for you whole cover sugar substitutes uh, some other day but sugar substitutes also are not healthy for you again in terms of fruit in 1910 about 100 years ago most of our fruits came as a fresh fruit now in 2008 half of our fruit comes as a processed fruit either juice or fruit jellos or fruit candies or whatever but half of our fruit is a processed fruit again this is the typical processed fruit when you go to a grocery store if your grocery store has a you know 100 uh, whatever 1 million square feet space 50% of space is by processed food 50% of space is by processed food the fresh vegetables fresh fruits are typically a small segment of the store most of the shelves in grocery stores are occupied by processed food and you can see there are probably 10000 items if not 100000 items in your grocery store with lot of processed food cereals are not a healthy processed food you know we used to think having a breakfast a cereal in the breakfast is a healthy thing to do it's not So then, this concludes segment two. This is my reflection. These are my questions to you. What do you think is the reason for obesity and type two diabetes? Which we will cover as we go more. But what are you? What do you think is the reason? Do you agree that whatever I cover has led to obesity and type two diabetes? My next question to you is: What is your body mass index? You all should know your body mass index. Is your body mass index above thirty? if that's the case you are at risk of developing type 2 diabetes what is your typical diet like i said american typical diet 65% processed food 25% animal products less than 10% plant based food and most plant based food is processed uh, like ketchup french fries uh, even oreos is a plant based food the typical whole food plant based that means eating vegetables uh cooked and raw vegetables without oil and fruits is less than 2%. So how much how many calories how many percent calories in your case come from processed food? Just look at your day yesterday see how many calories came from processed food whether chips or fries or any other processed food. Again this concludes segment 2. This brings us to our health coaching program. We are starting this health coaching program from July 1st. We are creating three packages. We'll be providing you more information on how to reach out to us if you are interested in this program. It will be one of the most cost effective program in my opinion it will be very successful, very effective because I'm putting a lot of efforts into uh making this program. We only have hired a person. She will be starting from July 1st. So if you are interested wait and watch out on our facebook page and we'll be providing you more information on how to uh, sign up for this coaching program again this concludes segment 2 tonight i will be ending our live with segment 1 and 2 tomorrow i'll be doing segment 3 and 4 uh, around same time 7:30 8 o'clock in the evening so please stay tuned uh, i definitely ask you to invite your friends and family to our page uh, i also ask you and your family and friends to get on our instagram also subscribe to our youtube channel our youtube channel has about 25 or 30 videos so watch all those videos those are all about healthy lifestyle there are videos on healthy eating exercise sleep happiness so watch watch those videos uh, come in ask questions uh, let's see how many questions i have um, i have a i've comment from vikas my childhood friend from my city in india he said hi dr shah so hi Uh, I also come in from Sunil. Hi, Sunil. Sunil is a great uh, friend, great employee. Uh, he's been doing a great job. Uh, I have Holly Secord, uh, Debbie Duff, uh, uh, Christy Parker, uh, one of our uh, fans. Viren Patel from my medical school was there. Tanya Thakkar was there. Neha Sharma from Southman, one of my ex colleague when I was working in Southman. Dana Andrela, one of my favorite person. She just retired three years ago uh, uh, from Oakland. A uh, great person. Minaxi Vedantam Avi Dasra was there Mike Marietta was there Sangeeta my cousin from Toronto was there Paul Chatley a great person from Detroit who has started the whole movement on healthy living plant based food he has some great seminars so reach out to Paul Chatley uh, uh, I think he has a he had a seminar which unfortunately was canceled because of covid 19 but you know watch out for him he's do, do great for our community in Michigan uh, our Anna our new coach Jenny Keaton Uh, Sangeeta Kaur was there. 
Hannah, our social media person, was a series of partner. He was there. So again, some great attendance. I'm going to end tonight's live. Tonight's live will be on YouTube at a segment one and two. So please watch out for them. Hopefully it'll be tonight. So you can watch the segment one and two tomorrow on YouTube, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah. Again, we will be starting uh, our cooking program also. Jayshri, my wife, has been very active with cooking program. So please stay tuned for live demos on healthy cooking. Uh, we are doing a, a healthy live cooking demo with Chef AJ on uh, Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, June 13th. June 13th, 6 p.m. Eastern time with Chef AJ. Chef AJ is one of the very popular, prominent, uh, whole food, plant-based, vegan chef. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, you will enjoy it. It'll be one hour. There'll be four dish, four healthy dish, uh, all without oil, all totally healthy, low calorie, very tasty. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, like I said, we are starting our coaching program. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, I will end my segment one and segment two. I will do segment three and segment four tomorrow. So please stay tuned. Thank you.